people. Um, <clears throat> so, and since I can't work out or play basketball because of a wrist injury, I'm making more videos. Clearly, I'm not going to do nothing while I'm not playing basketball. So, at least answer questions and stuff like that. All right. So, I want to talk about how to stay true to yourselves in intense relationships and in new relationships in general, right? Um, the thing is about people is this, right? People have different personalities for different situations. They have different ways of um, absorbing information, um, different ways of, one second, is this the right channel? Different ways of um, dealing with emotional, pro uh, different ways of processing information based on how you feel, right? So let's say you're in a good mood. Let's say somebody, let's say there's somebody, um, let's say that, that you want the lottery, right? And you want the lottery and stuff like that. And then since you want the lottery, you sort of break your leg and stuff like that, right? Even though you broke your leg, my dude, you just won the lottery, man. So it's kind of like you're going to process it much differently, right? Um, so as a result, so emotional state is what dictate, dictates your sense of self. In other words, there, you know when you say, I don't feel like myself, your identity has a certain sense, has a certain feeling, right? There are certain days you feel like yourself, and then there are certain days where you don't feel like yourself. Um, so that emotional state, certain emotional states, causes you to act in certain ways. When you feel angry, there's a certain part of you that comes out when you feel angry. You process information differently, you process inf insults differently, as opposed to when you feel compassionate, you process things differently and you act like a completely different person. And some people might even say that you're acting completely different, you know? Um, so that's the same thing. Um, by the way, people, hit the number one if you guys are in this. Can you guys hear me? Is this the, the women's channel? Hit the number one. Press number one if this is the women's channel. Sometimes I, sometimes I do that where I'll get the wrong channel and stuff like that. So somebody help me out. Hit press number one if this is the women's channel. Oh, this is women's channel? Okay, all right. Oh, what, notifications are not working? That's weird. Um, all right, anyways, so what, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, so whenever you get in a relationship, right, what usually happens then is that there is a certain side of you that comes out when you feel validated, right? When you feel validated by someone whom you admire or someone who represents almost like a father figure to you, you sort of regress. And, and that's what happens when you fall in love, you regress and you act differently, you behave differently and you don't feel like yourself, right? Um, you allow that emotions to completely consume you. And in fact, your goals even change. What you want out of life changes. Um, what you value completely changes because you become a completely different person. Your constant emotional state isn't the same no more. You completely think differently. In fact, you can't even think clearly, right? You are completely transforming into another person when you start liking someone. In fact, if you fear losing them, you could sort of become them, become them in a weird way or become their source of self-esteem. And if, and if they're toxic, you're going you're gonna to show you, you're going to sort of quote unquote and toxify yourself become become toxic yourself for other people if you stay in this, these kinds of relationships so you end up liking things you never liked before you end up doing things you never done before and that's because you became a completely different person you see the person who dominates the relationship is the person who doesn't change the one who's being dominated it changes you know, the way you think changes and stuff like that so in order to stay true to yourself the most important thing is to be willing to lose them I mean pretty much that's the gist of it is to to is to sort of be okay with losing them because usually the reason why you sort of let people use you or 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 um, or disrespect you and stuff like that is because you fear losing them you fear that if you you fear that, that they might take it the wrong way and lose you and so you don't want to do that right and so you sort of conform, your brain conforms. It's almost like when, you, you, when you're trying to fit in, right? When you're trying to fit into a group, you sort of, you sort of unconsciously gain their habits, unconsciously gain their taste, their values, the way they think, the way you even talk changes, right? 
And that's what happens when you're trying to fit in. And the same way happens when you want somebody to like you. You end up acting the way they, they act. You end up being almost like them. So if, if it's in a positive way, if there are people, if that person is positive and you admire them, stuff like that, you might use that as inspiration and you might slowly um, gain some of their good traits, right? But some, most of the time, most people aren't positive, unfortunately. Um, people who do this kind of stuff and most people, most of the time, they're, they're, they're not positive. So usually you gain some negative traits. You, the thing is, it's easier, to, it's easier to acquire toxic habits than good habits, right? It's fucked up though, right? Like, it's, 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 it's much easier to do that. I mean, for some reason, it, 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 is, it is how the, the world works, right? So that's why you guys really got to be careful with the people who you guys be getting with. You know, people who have no ambition, broke ass people, people who have no goals. And, and sometimes it's not your fault because you live in a shitty place. You know, you live in a place where in the culture, um, working on it, you live in a place where the culture doesn't promote um, being more, how can I say this, creative and individual, you know, unlike in, in America, stuff like that. But in that case, you know, being able to, being able to be yourself in, in cultures that doesn't promote it is a little bit more hard. It's, it's harder because, you know, not only do you have your own limited beliefs to deal with, but also you got to deal with the reaction of other people. So it sort of makes it extra hard and stuff like that, you know, but it's still possible though, but it just takes a tremendous, tremendous mind to do that. It's like learning how to read in fucking slavery time. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. How do, I mean, how the fuck did you learn to read <laughs> in slavery time, you know? Um, that's how it is, man, you know? Um, so generally, though, a good way to do that is to sort of have, how can I say this? Have goals that you want to achieve, right? And put everyone above it. Make everyone fit around it. In other words, it's not that you're making people fit around it, but that people's goals have to align with yours. Um, so that things you got to make that you require me, right? Because you don't want... The, the, the problem is that chemistry is so addictive. That's a problem, you know? Like the problem is that chemistry is so addictive to the point that you could just throw reason away and simply because you have chemistry with them, you blend with them, you, you, you work with them. And, and maybe, I don't, maybe I don't apply this to myself, but it's much better to be with someone with whom you're compatible in terms of emotions and in your goals than with someone who you have, who you have amazing chemistry, but you guys are not compatible in any way in life. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it is logic, but is it doable? I don't know. I personally don't know, especially if that other person is, is pursuing you and you're trying to get away from them. You know, it's like me trying to quit and weed and weed is like waking me up and like cuddling with me and like stroking my ear and stuff like that. I'm like, get the fuck away from me, weed. I'm trying to quit, you know? And weed is like, nah, come on, let's just like, just cut it. Like, that'll be hard. You know what I'm saying? Because I bet we would be very seductive and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyways. Um, can I stop walking? No, I got somewhere to be, girl. What the, what's your problem? If I stop walking, I stop, I stop the video because, um, I'm walking to the train and I wanted to walk and it's a nice day out today. So I was like, let me just walk. Tell me to stop walking. Come on, man, you tripping, girl. I'm not going to, the thing is that, exactly, get my exercise on. I'm not going to the gym, you know? Um, so, because I can't work out right now, so I'm using my walks and making my video as a way to exercise. So, it's like a 30 minute walk, so it's not that bad. So I go to the train and then when I get to the train, I draw and stuff like that. <laughs> this Jesus looks funny. He's like, you niggas really fucking did it. I cannot believe you did it. Really, nigga? He's like, really, nigga? <laughs> He's like, what did I do? <laughs> He's like, this is some bullshit. Usually Jesus on, like, when you see Jesus in photos, like in the, in the Renaissance, that dude is always suffering. You never see Jesus smiling. You never see Jesus high-fiving somebody. He's out there contemplating he's about to die and stress the fuck out. Or he's like suffering, getting his ass beat and stuff like that. Or like he just came out the grave, barely, barely dead and stuff like that. So <laughs> there was one photo though, when I went to the Louvre that I saw, 
where Jesus was like striding around. You can find it on my Instagram. He's like he's like striding around like and like his hoes all around him and shit, looking like a pimp. It's funny shit. <clears throat> nah, I don't go to Cali though, man. I I, I go I go there next year though. Next year I definitely go to Cali, but not this year. I got shit to pay, man. Trying to get my own place, you know. Fuck man, every time. I walk to in this area. This is this is around NYU. I'm like, why are there so many? Man, anyways, come to Vancouver. Hell no, man. Canada is boring as hell. Canada is boring as fuck. That person still following me. Um, are you coming to London again? Um, sometime next year. Not this year though, sometime next year I'll go. The, the only place I'm gonna go to is Mexico this year. That's the only place. Outside of that, I'm not going out there. What do you. So, yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, generally though, to really find it, to, to really not allow the guys to control you and stuff like that, um, you just gotta be willing to let them go and have your own goals. Like, have your own goals that provide personal pride that excite you that you want to achieve you know um and yeah thing is is that it's it's oh it's a little bit harder it's a little bit harder for women you know it's a little bit harder because sometimes a lot of their goals is predicated on the guy and on top of that like to make it even more challenging there's a clock you know like there's a shot clock in this so it makes it even harder so like, I completely understand and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, um, in life, it doesn't matter how much in a rush you are. Taking your time is always the best route, even if you don't finish. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, because at least the quality wouldn't be, wouldn't be destroyed. I mean, it's a lot worse to finish something with, of low quality than to have something that's half done, but of high quality. I don't know. I, I think I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Hey, we got a donation, um, Ms. V. Thank you for the donation. Wait for the guy to initiate a relationship always? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, whenever you're ready, whenever you're like at the breaking point, like, you know, when, when you're about to go crazy, um, always, always, and always, and send you always, coño. Whenever you want him to put more effort into the relationship or to commit more, your solution shouldn't be to yap and talk. Your solution should be to just pull pull back, you know, like make him feel. It, it's like you, you know when people move out and they move out and they take their furniture with them, right? And you're like, fuck, man, this guy needs to move back, man. Like I didn't know he owned the goddamn sofa, you know. That's the same way, right? Like you pull back, you make him feel what it is when I have you, and if he really misses you, he will have the urge to want to have something more. It's only when you're really thirsty. You drink a lot more water without even knowing it. You know when you're really thirsty and you just drink and you're like, holy shit, I completed the whole cup. But then when you're not thirsty and you drink and it's like a struggle, it's like people even have to force you to drink it in the same way. So you create that need, right? And the act of coming back to you makes them say, baby, let's get back together. And let's hack, in fact, let's get, let's get married. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they just go over. It's like when George Costanza was having sex with his secretary and he told her he's gonna give her a raise <laughs> because he was having sex with her. He was like, I'm gonna give you a raise. And he couldn't give her a raise. And in fact, she ended up getting a raise and he ended up earning more than him. So he was like, fuck, I can't have my secretary earn more than me. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious, yo. <laughs> yo, that's funny shit. That is funny as hell. <laughs> Seinfeld, yeah, that's a funny ass show. Um, yeah, Seinfeld is funny as shit. I used to watch that shit all the time, man. Um, press one if you can hear me. Press one if you can hear me. Press one if you can hear me. Alright, thank you. Um, when did you move out of your parents? Um, two years ago or so. I, I, all right, that, that's enough. That's enough. I can hear. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what else? What's another part of that? Um, 
You see, a big part is submitting to people's judgment, right? Like when you submit to people's judgment, when you sort of feel fear of people's judgment, that's when you also begin to change. That's when you also um, begin to want to change the way you think just to get their validation, you know? And the problem is that one of the most powerful ways to manipulate people into changing, which is what the, which is what culture does, what they what culture does to change people and to keep them behaving in the good way is is social isolation or or just social um, you know like, like like shame you know public shame because public shame is is equal to does produce pain in the body you know being shame in public does produce pain in the body you know what I'm saying um, so that's also one of the ways so it's kind of like when somebody makes you feel guilty um, and all that sort of stuff that's and, and that's what a lot of couples do in relationships you know when you have in those toxic relationships where they make you feel like you're the one that's wrong and so you even have to like even ask your friends like you know like am I wrong in this and stuff like that and like this shouldn't even make sense you know and that's what that's when people call me and I'm like man you're, you're not completely wrong you're right he's a he is a narcissist you know and the reason why a lot of people think take the blame is because if they take the blame in a way taking the blame allows them to feel that they could possibly fix it you know what I'm saying it's kind of like if they can't if they if the fact that the person doesn't like them is not their fault it means that they can't control the situation as a result they'll, they'll any hope of making this work will go out the window but if they believe themselves it gives them a reason to chase it gives them a reason to put in more effort and it, it, even though you are you are lowering your self-esteem it gives you hope for the short-term thing you know what i'm saying um and that's how that functions you know uh yeah man and look man any like people yeah i don't know man maybe that's why i'm happy i haven't been in some of those relationships because i can imagine like it must be stressful being in a relationship for a long time jesus fucking christ it must be horrible my lord um you know i was having some I, I mean i've lived with someone for two weeks that was a fun I, I needed her to go home she was she was like she was cute and all but like i was tired of her i was like yo man this this chick needs to go back to her house man i was like she, she even though she's fine as hell like smoking hot i was like this chick needs to go somewhere else Um, I've definitely seen me. Let me see if you guys have any questions. Be happy on your own before you get in a relationship. Exactly, man. And that's why I sort of. I, I sort of. See, I used to. I remember when people used to say. I, I remember when women, particularly women, it's only women who say this. I swear to God, only women say this. That's why I, I didn't pay attention to this. Because women are the ones that say this, and to be quite honest with you, some of the shit that women say, just it's just not even applicable to anything in life. And one of the advice that you and me always said was like, I need to heal before I get back with back. Or like, I need to heal before I get back with someone. You know, you know how that, you know how that goes. Like healing and stuff like that. And I used to say, man, what are you talking about heal? Like seriously, like what are you talking about healing? But then I realized that if you don't quote unquote heal you sort of fall in love with somebody who you would have not fall in love with like you fall in love with somebody who who is not even your type or somebody who you would have already who you would have not gotten attached to but for some reason they caught you at the wrong time you know um, so that's one of the dangers of of, of of dating and not healing it's kind of like playing basketball with and after you broke your ankle and then you're back to playing basketball three months afterwards. Like, dude, like, you're gonna break your ankle even worse. You're gonna make it even worse. So you're gonna end up falling for someone even harder, and it's gonna be it's, that one's gonna be even harder to let go of, you know. So that's why I think that out of all the shit that, to be kind of honest with you, out of all the shit that women say, I mean, I mean, because you guys just give some 
some of the advice that you guys give just make zero sense. Zero sense to me. There's there there some girls like this just laughing at that. You know, somebody, heel. I was like, what are you talking about heel? Like, that, that sounds like some bullshit excuse that girl gives to a dude. Like, saying, oh, I can't see you because I got a heel. I'm like, heel? I wonder we in Dragon Ball Z heel. Like, but apparently that's true. You know? Like, if you don't take your time and not dating, which sort of, I'll be honest with you, it goes against my interest. You know? Like, don't heal. What are you talking about? Don't heal. Go to Cinder. You know? Like, don't don't heal. Like, you, you women should not be healing. But uh, my other side says, nah, you should, <laughs> you should, because then you end up falling for a dude who just flaked on you. And in the past, you would have not reacted to him, but now you are. It's almost, it's almost like coming home from work, having the worst day in the world, and somebody getting in your face, and you punching them in the face. Not because that's your nature, but because it just got you at the wrong time. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how, that, that's how that works, man. That's how that works. And I be seeing girls on Tinder trying to heal themselves. I'm like, girl, I, I, I got you, girl. I'm your doctor. I'll heal you. Like, I'll, I'll heal you. I'll, I'll, I'll heal you. I'll definitely heal you. I'll, put you. I'll definitely start the healing process, you know? Um, but, yeah. Not a good move, though. Not, not a good move. Because I'm telling you, man, nothing... You see, falling for the wrong person could do two things to you. First, it could completely wreck your life, right? Oh, for me, it could wreck your life, but have a benefit to it, you know? And that benefit could be is, is that that pain is energy. That pain is some form of energy. And that energy, you can learn to be directed to, to achieve your goals and stuff like that. That's what I did. I mean, like, I, every time, every time I, that happens to me, I sort of... I sort of end up like you know like I, I always end up with you know something better you know like the first girl I ended up with with the with the women's channel with the men's channel you know and uh, the other girl I ended up improving this channel I mean it's it's one of those things it's kind of like but that's up to you though you know that's up to you or maybe that's just a reflection of your character like a part of you that you just like Part of you that you just cannot control, you know, like your character, like how you were born with, how you were, you, you it's like your, 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 in your DNA, you have a genetic predisposition to deal with certain kind of stress, you know, like literally, yeah, you were just born to react certain ways to certain things, you know, so that could just be a reflection of your character. Robert Greene talks about that in the book of The Laws of Human Nature. He talks about how, um, how, what was it? How, your character is, is imprinted in you at, at a young age, especially at, at, at your child. Like when you're born, you have your character, like your inborn character. And then as you're between two, between then the next part of your character that's developed is when, with your parents, how the relationship you have with your parents as an infant. And that's from like zero to like two. And then from two to seven is when you, is the imprint that you have with your friends, how the relationship you had, the, your natural character that came from being born and then that natural character reacted to your parents' character and then the combination were both reacted to the to the place that you were in to other kids' fucking character and then after that through all those years the next thing that develops is the first boyfriend you have and that also deeply affects your character because then you start feeling intense emotions and intense emotions completely could potentially rewire your brain. Intense emotions rewire your brain, especially if they're painful. Like they rewire your brain and leave an imprint that lasts for a lifetime. So that's why your first boyfriend sort of becomes your type. You know, like the first people who you have a cross on and fall for or who break your fucking heart, they sort of become your type, you know. Or it could be the people who, um, who you have a crush on when you're a little kid. They, they could potentially become your crush. Now the thing, question is, is it that your body naturally is inclined to like those certain kind of people? Is it that for some reason I always like girls who were, who were, you know, light skin and had black hair and stuff like that? I don't know. You know, it's just a coincidence. You know, I, I don't know. Is it a coincidence that I also like girls who were blonde and have glasses? I don't know. But those were the girls I liked, and they looked kind of nerdy to me. I mean, I knew she was a nerd. I was like. What's wrong with me? I mean, this chick is a nerd, you know? Like, but they made fun of me. The class made fun of me. When I found out that I liked her, her name was um, Irene. And this kid named Jonathan, he was like, 
dude, you like her, bro? And they just started like laughing and pointing at me. Like, I'm like, you don't need to point. I'm like, and this kid named David. I was like, you don't need to fucking point, man. Like, what the fuck pointing at me and shit? You have to point. That's fucked up, pointing. Just laugh, but don't point. That shit, you remember those pointings. Um, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. So now when I see blonde girls with like, with like glasses, it's like, ooh, man. Like, it's like, mm, I don't know, there's something about them, you know? Like nerdy girls, yeah. I, I've, I've always liked them, nerdy ones. You know, the losers with no friends. I, I like girls with no friends. Nice guys are sexy. Oh, sh shut up. Shut up. Shut up, Carol. You know that's not true. You can get out of here. Um, and shy, yeah, okay. Shy guys too, yeah. Sure, sure. Don't forget to hit that super chat, people. <laughs> what is this, a camouflage? What, what are they going to the jungle or something, man? Like. such a nice day today. It's very nice. How many people are here today? 209. Oh, you guys are looking at my crusty fingers. Oh, 209. There you go. Um, so yeah, man. You see any questions? Any questions? The guy, I like disappears every time I ask him. To stop talking to one girl that I can't stand. What can I do? You can't do nothing, girl. You can't. You can't change anyone. Look, man. Like I know you guys hear a lot of my advices to let them go, but what else am I supposed to say? You know, like I like. Look, man. I used to believe that. Uh, when, when look, I teach a lot of gambits, right? I teach you guys a lot of gambits. Cute little things to say or send this text to get a response. But the truth is that. Yeah, you get a response, but like the, at the depth of his being, does does how he feels for you, at, like at the depth of his being, really change? No, he hasn't. It's, it doesn't change, you know? Like, it's just that some people are meant to like you and some people are just not meant to like you, man. It's that simple. It is that, look, man, like when you like someone, you feel that shit from, from the beginning. You know, you feel it and, and it's hard to resist. So when you use these tactics on somebody that likes you, it really hits like a fucking nuclear bomb. Like it hits. And that's the thing you guys have to understand is that when they when they like you, they'll show you. I mean, they'll make it obvious, you know? They'll, they'll definitely make it obvious. All right, uh, let me see, read the question. Read my super chat. Hey, relax, Miss V, relax. I'm gonna read it. Oh, I, I remember yours. Um, just send your question right now, Miss V, so I can read it. Um, why would a guy be so afraid to approach me when we've had multiple staring matches for a long time? Now we're obviously both attracted. I know he wants to come to, wants me to come to him, but I'm not that aggressive enough. Don't let, don't come to him then. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, um, you gotta, nah, you can't, you can't, nah, mm -mm. you gotta let him come to you. One second, let me read. You gotta let him come to you. So even if it means losing him, Nah, let him come to you. One second. Miss V, oh, okay, let me read. Wait for the guys to initiate a relationship always? No. Let, oh, let, no, yes, let them initiate it. Different, differentiate busy man versus man chasing game. Um, a busy man will make time for you. Like, they'll always make time for you. Like, that, that whole thing of, of, no one's that busy. All right? No one is that busy. No one's that busy. I can promise you no one's that busy. You know, people procrastinate for a reason. If, 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 if he's a human, he procrastinates, right? So if he procrastinates, that means he has time to procrastinate. So no one was that busy, I promise you, man. So, um, so a guy who isn't attracted to you would not want to see you, you know? Or he'll only want to see you once a week, you know? Or, or he won't even make an effort to see you more than, more than once a week. So it's all, it's all, a guy who's really attracted to you will make the effort and you're going to feel it. When he's not attracted to you and not making the effort, you're gonna want to ask me, and, you know, because you're gonna have a feeling in your heart and like, what the hell's going on? It's not, you know, it's not right, you know. Um, oh, let me go back. So, Audrey, um, I know he wants to come. Yeah, man, Audrey, man, you gotta let him come to you, man. Like, 
unfortunately you like them, but like you got to unlock, man. Unless you're about to explode, right? And you're like, fuck it. The light says, I don't give a fuck about. I don't got pride. Not pride, but I don't care. Like I just want to know. All right, you can go up and just give him your number. You just give him your number and tell him to text you. And then when he texts you, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. He made you wait. You you make him wait. So take your time if you want to do that. Um, yeah, that's if you want to do that. But I, I think I think that after a while, if you want to like, yeah, that that whole take that whole giving your card and then having him text you because when you have him text him, when you have him text you, you sort of once again restarting that. You know, you restarting it because he still has to initiate something. Right. The point is, is that he's gonna have to initiate because you, like, you cannot, you cannot go up to him, get his number, and then you initiate him. I mean, no fucking way. I mean, mm -mm, no, no, no. Maybe a guy. Yeah, sure, guys could do that, but not girls. No, absolutely not. Man, that's nice. Oh wow. Very nice. Um, how the hell does married people stay together with this shit all this time going on? I don't know. I don't know how they do it, man. I don't know. They're superhumans. Um, yeah, people, remember to clear your search history. You know, but the problem is that you won't get your recommended settings. You know, you want to get recommended. You know, so I don't know about that. Actually, I don't know about that. Be careful. Don't, don't, don't. Mm -mm. I don't know about that. Don't, don't erase your search issue because you need to get notifications when my videos come up. So I don't know, man. I'm not liking this. All right, you say, I'm a Virgo woman um, with a Virgo man, old, eight years older than me, and it's going three years. All right. Why is he mean to me 75% of the time? High school pressure for real. If he's mean to you, why are you with him? Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. No, no, no. no. Man, there's people here. I don't want to look crazy. You're making me look crazy here, man. But yeah, man, you, you, you got to... No, nah, nah, absolutely not, man. You can't stay with this. You got to drop him. You can't let people be mean to you. Like, I don't care what kind of mean it is. Foreverly mean, mean in general, it's like, I would not let anyone be mean to me, you know? So leave, man, leave, leave. I don't want, the thing is, I don't want to be stereotypical right now, because now people are telling me, I'm always saying, telling people to leave, but, I mean, what else am I supposed to say, you know? Sometimes the solution is simple. For some reason, you know, they, people don't want to, don't want to pay attention. Yeah, and there's nothing going on with me and Virgo. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Good shit. Yeah. I'm trying to be slick. Blaming, 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 it on, blaming it on the fish. All right, leave that fish alone. All right, don't blame the fish. Nah, I'll never be in the Bronx. No fucking way. No way. You'll never catch me there. Um, no, he has high pressure. <laughs> Um, uh, um, let me see. Now, that's a guy. You see, guys, the questions that I read are the short ones, right? Like, I read the ones that are short. So don't be asking me no goddamn book and say, what the hell is going on here? So yeah, if, you get, if you're gonna ask the questions, just make them short. Um, where are you in downtown? Um, Lower East Side? Not Lower East Side, but around St. Mark's. St. Mark's. All right, every time I will catch you live, I try to support. Yeah, there you go. Jelly, my nigga Jelly. Yeah, I like that. Good support. Thanks for the support, man. Um, How important is charisma? With you ladies, not important. It's not important, man. Femininity is more important than charisma. Like, 
the charisma is more for the guy than the woman, you know? Like, you don't want to be too charismatic. Like, nah. we, don't, we don't need you to be charismatic. We don't need you to be fun, right? Just be feminine and stuff like that, and that's all you need to be. When am I going to repent and be baptized? <laughs> um, I was baptized once when I was a little kid. When I was like 15, I was baptized. So what do you mean, you know? And I'm, I'm not going to repent. When are you going to repent? Well, you can repent. You're watching my channel. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, literally. No, I'm actually going to eat some crepes. I want a crepe. When he says, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, how can a guy show I like him in a delicate way? What do you mean, delicate way? Like, don't show him you like him. Why are you trying to show him you like him? Just stay where you are, all right? Let him, let, let him do all the guessing. Let him. Let him like pick up the scraps and 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 come up with his own conclusion. Like let him do the work. Let him do the mental work. Um, what should a ten-month long-distance relationship be? I don't know. Where you want it to be? You know? Look, man. At the end of the day, it's all about whether or not you're happy. You know? And it's also whether or not you, that's that's all that matters. So it's kind of like if you want him to be with you now, oh, yeah. then I would just break up and say, hey, man, I don't think we should cheat each other because I, I, we live too far. So if he wants to, it, so it's kind of like you sort of force him to the side, you know? Long distance relationship really work. Maybe, I don't to be, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't have the, I don't really look at the stats about that, but. It was, it'll be very interesting to see the stats behind it, you know? Like, honestly, like, compared to most relationships, it'll be very interesting to see how do long-distance relationships last compared to normal ones. That'll be very interesting. I would guess that they don't, I would guess that they don't last as long. No, no, I mean, I mean, hmm. Hmm. I don't know, that'll be interesting. I mean, I would think logic it, it means, I would think logically they wouldn't last as long. Logically they wouldn't last as long. I, I, I could say that more cheating goes on in it, you know? Like, people cheat more because it's a lot easier to get away with it and you could, and you could justify it. Now, you could easily do some, like, mental gymnasium and then say, like, fucking, and just find some justification for it. Um, Jesus said, accept you, repent you, or all will perish. I, I mean, why, why are you watching my channel? I mean, you should, you should be careful. You, go, you might be going to hell. Honestly, God, you might be going to hell because you're watching my channel. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I know how hard breakups are. Um, how did I get how did I get a shot co-worker who likes me to approach me I don't know just say hi to him when you go when you start working you know just say hi papi I mean just say like hi hi dad hi um Michael whatever the hell his name and stuff like that and just do that every day you know like make it a point to to say hi as you're you know, starting your shift and stuff like that. And hopefully he'll get the point. Look, man, like, I think that if that's not the case, I would talk about him to a friend of his that you find, that you know he knows. And be like, hey, you know, is, 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 is he single or something like that? And look, guys, they talk, right? They talk. So he'll, he'll be like, yo, bro, like, you know, she wants your dick and stuff like that. And um, you better get this and stuff like that. And that's how, and if he doesn't make, if he doesn't make the move, then I'm sorry, man. I mean, you can decide, is it worth approaching or it's your decision after that. Um, let me see. How to act when girls flirt with you or man? Ooh, yeah, shit. Uh -huh. That is interesting. I mean, oh man. What do you guys think? 
Like, what do you, like, you guys give me a response to that. Like, let me read some of your answers. That is very interesting. How do we act when a girl respond, hits on your man? That is very interesting. Let me see your responses. Damn, shit, those girls are bad. Uh, my boyfriend is a top streamer and it's not he should know where he stands But he should act you should stand up and not a scoring service like your host Nor I don't know man. I mean Well, I guess you would say hey man, you know, are you gonna call? I don't know man. I that is a tough one Jesus Christ You guys are really killing me with these answers man with these questions. I, I don't know if a girl if a guy is hitting on my girl how would I react? Um, I would approach her and just say, "Hey, wait!" I'd be like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'm Delexis," you know. And I'll make sure. And, and I hope my I hope my girl, like you know, like gets on my side, you know. And because um, then I look a fool. She'd be like, "Hey, I'm talking to him." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> that, that that really I really look a fool. But um. But yeah, I would ignore it. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Ignore it, and um, yeah, I would. Ignore it. But then again, if you feel, if it does make you feel insecure, I mean, I would say, hey, look, man, I, I don't know. That's tough, man. That's tough. That's tough. That's because it's different for a guy. As a guy. I could stand up and say, hey, man, like, hey, what's up? And just say, hey, I'm to Lexus, you know? Like, that's reasonable, but, you know, like, guys know women are crazy, and maybe, you know, to a guy, he'll be like, oh, this could be a glimpse of her, of who she is on the inside. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I could be wrong. Don't move on, on to the next. On to the next question. I don't want to look a fool with this question. Um... He played you like four. Uh, why would a guy flirt with girls online if he has a girlfriend? He's looking, he's, he's taking in applications, man. And first of all, what website? Why is he getting caught? I mean, why are you online? Somebody told you about that? Anyways, um, if he's online, I, I mean, that's to, to me, that's almost like cheating, man. To me, that's cheating. I mean, literally, to me, that's cheating. That's literally going on a blind date, almost. But yeah, that I don't know. That's that's a deal breaker to me. As you guys can tell, I break it off. I'm like, I'm always, look, I'm always looking for an excuse to end it. I, I don't know if you guys can tell that, you know. Um, but I don't personally, like, like I said before, I don't end it. I just, I just pull back and stop investing. All right. My best friend's boyfriend sent me nudes and she stayed with him. I would tell your best friends. I would tell your best friend, man. I mean, that's a little weird, man. And hey, that's a little ballsy. We looking at him or something? We like looking at him a little bit too much? I don't know, that's a little ballsy. Oh, she knew, oh. Is she, was she mad at the fact that he sent you nudes? Maybe, maybe she's trying to, you know. No, he's like, oh, okay, all right. All right. Okay. He's a little freak. Um, let me see. I asked a guy I like if I'm friend zone. He said, I haven't ruled anything out. Where do I go from here? Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. What? Girl, how much validation are you giving to this dude? Like, you really are validating him. I mean, you really are validating him. I mean, the fact that he has a boss to say that is 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 an indication that you're you're literally just watching just watching these videos and just watching it for entertainment. Like, don't tell people you watch my videos if you're acting like that. Don't don't, don't, don't mm -mm. no don't don't give us a bad name. Look, I don't know, man. You that is something that you should walk away from. Absolutely. That is that is cocky as hell. That is that is something you only say to somebody who has validated you, you know. So I don't know. 
I wouldn't continue. I would just pull, like I always say, pull back, pull back. Look, man, the reason why I always tell you guys to pull back is because pulling back allows you to know whether or not people are trying to manipulate you and they really like you on the inside or whether or not they just don't care and they're just fucking with you, you know? It just, it just, it, it, pull it back is like when you, when you're playing poker and you put the cards in the deck. I don't know what you call it, but you call the cards, whatever the fuck that is, right? So that's what that is, and it works. I mean, it's like, again, like I said, it's Robitussin for dating. Robitussin, you know? Robitussin is, or, or for the Hispanics, um, vapor rub, you know? It's the, it's, 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 